we basically tell people aim for one gram per pound, which would be 2.2 2, uh, grams per kilo. Um, because the other thing that complicates it, Rhonda, is not all protein is created equal. So, you know, if you're eating, un if you're getting a reasonable amount of your protein in, uh, in from, from uh, plants, you're getting a lower bioavailable amino acid. You're also not getting the same quantity of leucine, lysine, and methionine, which are probably the three most important amino acids anyway. So, um, you know, one of the things Don Lehman talked about was if you really want to be rigorous about this, you probably want to track those amino acids. And you really want to say, look, make sure you're getting one gram at least of methionine per day, two to four grams per serving of leucine and lysine. Now, again, for a lot of people, that's too nerdy, but, but, you know, you can go through the math a couple of times with certain things that you eat repeatedly and you'll realize that's probably more protein in aggregate than a person is used to eating. And as you said, when you start to factor in those two other categories of risk, right? More demand. So when you're doing those high intensity workouts, you are ripping apart muscle fibers when you're lifting weights, when you're rucking, when you're doing all these other things we have to do, you're demanding more amino acids for the turnover. And then of course, anabolic resistance, I think is the biggest issue. And, and something that truthfully up until two years ago, I just wasn't paying enough attention to. I, I wasn't appreciating that my older patients had a, had an additional problem that younger patients didn't have with respect to that signal. So that's a lot, 2.2 grams um, per kilogram by weight. That's, I mean, I struggle, like I, to get, for me to get 1.6, like I'm supplementing, I'm, I'm taking whey protein. Like mm -hmm. I, I just can't, it's like how many, like, so how many meals? Like, Typically do you four. Think, yeah. Cause it's yeah, hard to, have, you, it it's to hard. Yeah. It has to be. And, and, and one of like, so, so for me, it's really two meals and two snacks. And the snacks mm -hmm. are just protein, protein. snacks. So, right. so it's a, it's a shake. So one of them is just a whey protein shake. And then one of them is I eat these venison jerky sticks. So five venison jerky sticks is 50, they're 10 grams a piece. Um, and they're really good. They're, you know, super pure venison. Um, it's, you know, wild game, a amazing product. And I, I should disclose I'm an investor in the company that makes them, by the way. Um, I was going to ask, do you make them? Is it like- No, yeah, own? but I, I, no. I, I know the people so well. I know everything about it and I know that the quality is there. Um, so those are two snacks, right? They're otherwise, they're, they're relatively low in calories, right? Like my whey protein shake doesn't really have anything else in it except some frozen berries and almond milk. Um, and then the, the venison sticks are what they are. And then, uh, and then two meals that are you know going to have protein. And for me, again, a lot of times, like it's going to be an omelet and then, you know, protein dinner. So yeah, it's, um, not going to deny it. It's work. It's, it's not, um, it probably consumes more of my, uh, dietary planning and dietary attention than anything else. I, I, I don't pay any attention to how many carbs and fat I eat anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm just paying attention to protein intake. It's something I never really paid attention to at much at all. Um, you know, until, and I would say like last June or July is when I really started focusing on strength training, you know, both for my muscle mass and also bone mineral density. Like, I mean, yep. like, like that's another thing where it's like, you want, you want to like, that's, you want a reserve of that as well, especially as a, as a female, right? Like, so yep. that, that those are like folks focusing on the, the strength training and also the protein intake. And it's been quite challenging. I've always sort of focused on micronutrients and I, and it is, you know, it's still a focus of mine and like making sure I'm getting enough of those. And I do supplement as well. Um, uh, you know, in addition to trying to eat like leafy greens and getting some, you know, some of the veggies and stuff, it's either going to be roasted veggies for me or like salad. But, um, the protein intake is like, it's been, it's been challenging. And I find I typically do three meals. Um, one of them is, is like a, a, a protein meal snack. So it's like, some salmon or like a, a, a homemade turkey burger or something like that. Uh, but then the protein shakes also is where I ha I just have to do, I guess that I don't really consider it a meal, but it kind of is. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it is like, it's, it's satiating. The protein like shake is definitely satiating. And I'm already, it's all, even kind of hard because when you work out, like, as you mentioned, your, your satiety, you know, hormones go up. Like you're, like I'm not hungry. Like I don't like necessarily want to eat. Like it 
it takes a while before I can actually like even get an appetite, you know? Yep. So there's all these like competing things where I'm like trying to get the protein, but I'm like, I'm not really hungry. And I'm like, but I know I need it. And, you know, so all these little um, important factors. And yet again, um, important to sort of, you know, highlight that, you know, I don't know that someone who is overweight or obese necessarily needs to focus so much on that, right? I mean, would you agree? Right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, most people who are what I call overnourished are also adequately muscled and they can actually in the short run be okay losing lean mass. In fact, it's very difficult to lose heaping amounts of body fat while preserving lean mass. So we tend to focus more on the caloric restriction coupled with the training. We use the training as a way to offset some of that lean mass loss. Um, and, and then we can come back to it, but, but yeah, now that said for people, so it depends on the strategy, right? Depends on the dietary strategy. So for people who are using tracking kind of the caloric restriction way, we would still set a protein target that is at two grams per pound because of the satiating benefits that you said, right? Also you have the thermogenic effect and the benefits of protein over fat and carbohydrate from a thermogenesis standpoint, but when you have people that are going about it via dietary restriction or time restriction as their strategy for cutting calories, it can become a little overwhelming. And when you force high protein, you sometimes end up getting high calorie with it. So that's where we would say, just don't pay attention to it as much. Just focus on the, the DRTR approach. The other place, Rhonda, where we do pay a lot of attention to protein is in the few of our patients that are taking GLP-1 agonists. So uh, I've been a pretty public, uh, critic might be too strong a word, but I've certainly expressed my reservations about the ubiquitous use and the liberal use of GLP-1 agonists, especially in people, you know, just trying to lose 10 pounds, right? Like it's one thing if you're hundred pounds overweight and you've tried everything, by all means, the benefits clearly outweigh the risks, but you know, the, um, I got to get my beach body on for the wedding this summer. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Let me fire up some semaglutide or terzepatide. I think that's a net negative personally. And in those patients, not that we're giving it to those patients, but in any patient who's on a GLP-1 agonist, we feel it is so essential to hammer home protein because those drugs are so effective at squashing appetite that I mean, we've seen people who basically just want to drink alcohol when they're on it and they'll lose weight like crazy because they're, you know, not getting that many calories, but they're like, yeah, I just like wine. Losing muscle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just losing muscle, muscle drinking wine. <laughs> yeah, no. um, I, yeah. So. Yeah. I totally, like I've, I've got um, some acquaintances that are of that category where it's like, you know, a stay at home mom wants to lose 10 pounds, has the, the means to, to get it and does it. And um, they're, they, I mean, I, have, we haven't measured muscle in them, but I look at them and I'm like, you look like you're wasting your, like your muscle is wasting. Like, you know, you're not, if you're not eating, you're not taking in protein. 